50-50 is what this position is called. Okay? Um, actually, let me change legs because I'm going to fall away from the camera on the other leg. Okay, so this is what's called 50-50. It's called 50-50 because we're in exactly that situation. He has the exact same attacks I do. We're essentially in the same position. Okay? Neither one of us has a real advantage or disadvantage over the other. Okay? Um, so, I have two uh, main jobs when I'm in this, well, one main job, um, first of all, and a way I do that main job. So, the first thing I want to do is create a situation that's not 50-50. So, I don't want to be attacking in a position where he has just as many options as I do. I want to give him a disadvantage, okay? And uh, there are basically two ways that I would, two things I would need to do to give myself an advantage here. The first would be, I need to separate his feet. So now this leg is no longer control, uh, protecting this leg, so I've given myself a little bit of an advantage there. And I want to bring this knee out to the ground like this. Now my knee is outside of his legs, and now I've created a different position. This is called 80-20, okay? He has some attacks, but I have a lot more attacks now than he does. For example, if I, leave, if I uncover my foot and he tries to heal with me, it's not going to really work because my heel is not isolated, okay? He doesn't have control, not my heel, he doesn't have control of my leg, or of my knee, okay? So since my knee is outside, the heel hook doesn't really work on this leg anymore. Um, I mean, if he just used absolutely, yeah, did that, but let's assume that you're not there. <laughs> Let me explain. So, I mean, if he used a lot of excessive, brutal strength, if he was like five times my size, he could probably get something going here. But first of all, I still have my foot that I can use to interfere with that. And second of all, it's it's going to take him a lot of time to get something going. Okay, it's not, it's not going to be an easy heel hook for him to hit here, so that's why this is a better position for me. Notice I say better, not good. Okay, I, I still have, he still has some options he can do, or like Jan just showed, he, if he just grabs my knee and pulls it back in, then we're back in 50-50 and I need to, need to control things again, okay? So always bear that in mind when you're in 50-50, one of the first things you want to do is upgrade it to 80-20 because then you have an advantage. You never want a situation where he has just as many options as you do, that's just, I don't want to say a recipe for disaster, but it's always disadvantageous for you. Okay, so there's always a question. First thing I like to do is just for separating the legs, um, I could try to do this, but the problem is, is now I've, I'm using both my hands and he has two hands free. Exactly, he, now he can just grab, start grabbing my arm, and now, now, now exactly, yeah, and he can start heising up, and we start getting into problems there. So um, I prefer, when I'm going to start, I prefer keeping at least one hand here to kind of guard off. And I want to put my elbow in here, and I'm going to sink back with my body weight as I flare the elbow open. Okay? That's going to separate his legs, and now I'm further away, and I can get my knee out. Now we're at 80 20. Okay? To support that further, I can use my free hand to push the leg away, and really important is when I'm doing this elbow wedge to get his leg off. Okay? I'm not keeping my elbow glued to my to my ribcage, just let me pull it off. Because the problem is now I've actually pushed his, his foot really close to my hips, and it's gonna be harder for me to get attacks off. I wanna flare my elbow my elbow out so that his toes kind of land in my armpit. And also just makes it easier to to open up the legs. So we come in here and I'm flaring the elbow out. And I land right on his knee, on his toes, and I've already got my knee on now. Okay, with my free hand, I can post on this leg. And what I want to do is start rolling this way to elevate his foot. I go up on my head, and I basically do a back, uh, an elbow to the back uh, with my arm, so that I can catch his foot, catch his heel. Now with this hand, I'm not going to do the typical palm to palm heel hook grip. Um, this is perfectly fine. The only thing is, is this is of the heel hook grips the loosest, okay? If I'm going to, if I want to just upgrade things considerably with little work, what I would do is instead of going palm to palm, I would go palm to wrist, 
and with my other hand I want to touch the heel of his foot. This is automatically tighter now, isn't it? You feel yes. a lot more tension, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and I want us to just stop there. Okay, I don't want us to actually finish yet. Okay, and what I want to do is just let's separate the legs, go to 80-20, catch the heel. Okay, that's all I want to work on for right now. So, show you that one more time. So, again, I'm here, elbow goes in, flare it out, post, head rolls to the ground, and the elbow goes back. My elbow is quite considerably behind my back now. And now, palm to wrist, fingers to heel. Okay? And also, when I'm doing this, I want this foot to either be on the ground or even on my own heel. I don't want it to just kind of be something like this. Uh, you right you automatically feel, yeah, you also automatically feel less tension, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah exactly. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. so, so if we go back, I want it either here. Or even better, a little is if I can go here. Now you actually feel even more tension, don't you? Okay? One of those two. Either foot on the ground or ideally foot on foot. Because now I'm also weighting his hips down, it's going to be harder for him to high step. Okay, let's work on that and then we'll do some finishing mechanics, okay? So, that entry is starting to look good with everyone, so let's start. I want to just give a couple of details, some things I saw everyone doing that I don't want you doing because it's bad, okay? So the main thing is, is when I'm doing this, what I'm not doing, I'm not trying to push his arm out with my shoulder like this. Um, my arm's actually really weak in this direction if I try to push him out like that. What I'm doing instead is more like I'm trying to do sort of that karate elbow to the guy behind me. So I'm just kind of coming in here and just kind of wedging my elbow and then I flare my elbow out, okay? That's more the movement that I'm doing here. And really important, this is something I saw a lot of people doing, is once I get here and then land here, I need to keep everything kind of close in and tight, okay? Something I saw a lot of people doing when they were trying to do the roll to catch the, catch the heel is that you were either straightening this leg or going back with your body into like this sort of situation and as you can see I start to lose his foot now okay so I, I need to keep everything as close and tight as I can and this isn't so much an abridging it's more like I'm trying to roll in this direction and that's going to get me the opening to get his heel that's how I get the heel exposure okay and really important is I want to keep this nice strong bend in his leg Okay, so I'm just, if I have here, mm -hmm. and I have here, which one did you, which one, which one of these do you prefer? The second. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I could still injure him, I could still get a break with this, but I think you get the feeling that it's going to take me longer that you have more chance to escape here than in the other one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, those are just a couple of, uh, of details with, um, catching that heel hook that to, to keep in mind. You don't want to be pushing away from him. You don't want to be trying to, to, uh, to use too much muscle. It's more like you're rolling over to the other leg, okay? So, now let's go to the actual finishing mechanics of the heel hook. No, move, move this way, that I want to make sure, you, like this, so that I can get better in the camera. Okay, so same entry, okay, let's just, Go here, so the same, rolling over, catching the heel, and a big mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to finish heel hooks is that they use their upper body, okay? Okay, I don't want to say a big mistake. I can get a break like this. If what I do is I take, I'll go slow. If I take this grip and I go this way, I am eventually going to get a break, okay? But the thing is, is I was, probably 60% of my way in terms of my range of motion. I don't have a lot of range of motion if I'm going like this. Mm -hmm. And I can keep it very go. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I got pretty far with that. <clears throat> what I prefer to do instead, and this is the way most really high level people when they're finishing heel prefer to do it. First, 
this is why I was saying before I would like to get to it on foot. Yeah, yeah. And I want to get my hips in the air. And I'm not finishing with my upper body. I'm going to go slow. I'm hipping in with my hips. Okay? And look at how fast that comes. Okay? I keep everything locked here. Foot on foot, hips in the air. And I just bridge in with my hips. And I'm doing like, I don't even think that was 5%. To give you an idea, pull your foot out. Just keep it there. My range of motion like this is that. <laughs> Okay, that's how far I could have gone like that, okay? We weren't even at the first 5% and I'm already getting a tap. And that's kind of your ideal when you're doing any kind of locking submission, okay? You, if you're like cranking on something, your face is turning red, and you're giving it all you've got, like, like veins are popping out of your forehead from all the work you're putting into this, that means your mechanics are bad. That means you do not have a good bite on things. That means you do not have good tension. And to be quite frank, if someone's good, he's going to get out of it. Okay? So, what? basically, I have the rule, if I can crank on something for five seconds and the guy doesn't tap, that means I need to adjust. So, um, Craig Jones was actually one time saying it wasn't, it wasn't with a lot, but it was with a choke. Um, the only time he ever got heel hooked in a tournament was when um, he had someone in a triangle, and the triangle wasn't in. And um, he basically just tried to muscle it. So he had the guy in a, in a bad triangle, and instead of readjusting the triangle, he just tried to power through it with all of his leg muscles that he possibly could, and he burned his own legs out doing that. He had no more energy in his legs, could barely stand up, and then he had another five minutes of the match left. And uh, that's when he got heel hooked because he couldn't do anything to defense because when your cardio is gone, all your technique goes out the window. If you can barely move, you can't fight anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when you're doing any kind of submission. You want to have optimal mechanics. If you're squeezing fairly hard and move over this way. If you're squeezing fairly hard and he's not even close to tapping, if, you, if your opponent's just like, and you're squeezing with all you've got, that means you're not in as much as you think you are and you need to adjust your mechanics. And the answer to a bad submission is never just squeeze harder, okay? That is never the answer to anything. So, again, we come in here, separate the legs, come in here, I've got those toes nice and in my elbow, I can hold it here, and I roll over, catch the heel, here, okay? Foot on foot and get my hips in the air and very, very gently I start to move forward with my hips. And I'm actually doing this nice because I'm trying to keep the pressure off his heel. If I want to increase the pressure without hipping in, I just look away. This is already, it's not terribly, but this is already worse, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm not even hipping in yet. Now I just hip in a bit and I get the tap right away. <clears throat> okay? So, keep crunched. Nice bend in the elbow, look away, and once you have all those factors, if he's not tapping yet, that is when you gently start to hip in. Notice I say gently, I'm talking about gently for training, don't break your training partners. If you're at a tournament, break that guy's leg. So, just go crazy. <laughs> but with good mechanics. <laughs> okay? Okay, so just a... Quick little note about how to grip, just because I realized I'm, everyone was kind of doing this correctly, but just in terms of the hand positions, I'm going to be on my elbow, just just for the sake of clarity. When you're doing this, you want to be like this. I'm just doing this on my elbow so I can explain the grip, okay? Um, and basically, my hands always want to constantly be in two separate directions, okay? The hand that's on his heel, I always like to think it's like I'm looking at my watch and I want the hand that's on his heel, I always want that palm to be facing away from me, okay? And the hand that's coming up here, I want this one to always be pointing towards me. And then I get my grip like this, okay? If I do it the other way around, I'm actually kind of giving up my own, my own grip, more or less, because now the grip is facing to me. I have to hold everything with just my fingers. This is just muscles, and I think your fingers are probably some of the weakest muscles in your body. So, 
you, you don't even have to. I, my own pulling motion is going to break my own grip, okay? If I'm doing it this way, now I would have to literally go through my own hand to be able to break my own grip now. So this is a much stronger grip, okay? It's the same same principle to a gable grip. If I'm using a gable grip and I'm pulling, and I'm wanting to pull like this, this is where the gable grip is weak because I'm going away from my hand. If I'm going into the pan or like this, that's where the gable grip is strong, okay? So it's the same situation. So I want to have the one hand pointing away from me, the other hand is pointing towards me so that it's not muscle that's holding it together anymore, this is bone. So I, I literally have to break my own wrist now to break my grip, okay? So this is going to be stronger than if you're trying to do things like this. Okay, so just kind of build that connection. The hand that's on the foot, that one is always pointing away from you. The hand that's going uh, uh, going to touch the heel, that one's always pointing towards you. And then you're going to have your optimal grip. Okay? 50-50. Um, okay, so next kind of attack we can do with 50-50. So um, this is actually an attack that fell out of favor for a while. And uh, the last ADCC, you kind of saw a comeback. It's a straight foot lock. So uh, a lot of people actually have really inefficient footlocks and it, it's gotten to the point where people have been putting a lot of time in and they've kind of made a comeback. So going to our separation, bringing it into 80-20, okay? I want to go straight to the uh, uh, straight footlock. So what I'm going to do is kind of cup it here on the heel, pull it up and bring it over, okay? So now what I need to do is kind of change my leg, leg configuration because I need to be able to put pressure on his knee. So what I'm going to do is take this one, this leg, the outer leg, hook it in here, and I can use that to come back up. I like to kind of put my foot on my calf, okay, and the other leg kind of hooks in here. You can also just kind of put it in here. I just find this more comfortable. And Really important is you want to pinch your legs. Okay, I don't want my legs out like this. It's not only that, not, not only that you, just, you just don't really feel a lot of pressure right now, do you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I pinch, okay, this is, this is going to start mobilizing a lot more, okay? Mm -hmm. And we come to like the number one problem, I think, for why people don't finish straight foot locks is they're trying to go too high. Okay, a good rule of thumb is if I can look back and I can see his toes, I don't have the straight foot lock in correctly, okay? So what I don't want to do is start doing things like this because now we can pull his foot out, okay? If I've got this sort of Achilles grip, I want to keep this kind of in. And Deca Moody, when I was at B team, actually in my last trip, he was showing us, yeah, my might be a good idea to rotate a bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, he was, he was showing us when he was finishing the straight foot lock, okay? I don't want to just start cranking. <sighs> I mean, mm -hmm. I eventually got the tap, but that was a lot of work, okay? When we're doing locks of any kind, we want to give minimal effort, especially in this kind of a training atmosphere, and get the tap, okay? So what I'm going to do is from here, I kind of take my hand off my wrist, and I use this hand to sort of shove it down. Now I've got his toes in my armpit, okay? And I want to retract so that I can grab my own wrist. And right now, actually, this is almost like the Shashinsky lock. Mateo Shashinsky does this a lot. I've actually got his heel kind of on my ribs. Okay, so I'm not quite like this. The, the heel's coming out a bit. I still got it. Do you feel like you can pull your leg out? No. Yeah, I still got a nice, good, tight grip, pinching my knees, and now I just need to hit it. And now I get to tap really fast. That is, like maybe 10%, I'll do, let me do it again, just to tap. I can still go that far, okay? So, and uh, when you're doing this Sashinsky style straight foot lock, yeah, this is probably even going to be worse now because I almost have an Ioki lock here, mm -hmm. okay? So this is not only attacking his foot, but also his knee. And the lock comes really fast now. Okay? So I want to start with that lock and let's see how that goes. And we might start doing something on the other leg as well. Okay?
So, you need to see that again, anyone? Is that correct? Uh, I need to uh, put it all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I just, so it's just kind of, so I'm, I'm just cupping in, in here. I'm not trying to, I don't want to grab my thumb. I'm just kind of basically taking this sort of a scoop and just kind of scooping it over. Mm -hmm. So no inversion or rolling? No, 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 no. You don't need to. I mean, I, I generally use inversions more for entries nowadays than I do for actually switching switching locks. Um, just because when you invert, that just causes motion and more motion, the easier it is to get out of things. So from here, that's where I put my foot in and take my grip. Yeah. Okay. So let's work on that and then we'll go to another attack. Sometimes we're going to get in positions where we can't really separate the legs all that well with this particular motion. I still want to try and at the very least get my knee out. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to attack the other leg. So instead of trying to separate them with my elbow, I'm going to pick up here and take up that leg. Okay? Now I can sit back up and I'm not going to do the same style of lock this time because this, yeah, exactly. I don't really, I can't really ex exercise pressure on your uh, on your knee like this. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to switch our grip. I'm going to go under with this hand and back with this hand. Okay, sort of like a rear naked choke grip. And now I can use the whole thing to yeah. <laughs> now I can use the whole thing to pull the knee the the um, the heel on my on my uh, mm -hmm. chest. And now I can use this this motion to submit. This is almost an Aoki lock, actually. So okay. So again, kind of show, showing from the beginning. So I'm trying to get my my elbow in like before. I can't get my knee out. I just grab the other leg, not like this, using that kind of swap grip. And I get my um, Achilles grip, basically, but I'm not going to try and finish with this. From here, I can go up. The cool thing is, is a lot of times, as it vents from people, is that they try to grab your head, so that they can, this is actually not bad for me now, because it keeps his leg where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and now, I can Achilles lock. Or, uh, actually, this is basically an Ioki lock. This is not an Achilles lock anymore. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm really bringing that, um, that heel up onto basically my, my this, this breastplate here. The heel is basically, I have my hand on my bicep and the heel is all the way over here. And I've got this other, yeah, I'm not even using much pressure right now. So your hand is working. Yeah, yeah. I try to grab here and go up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to finish it, uh, and if, uh, if I don't tap here, uh, can you pick off the foot? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, what are your movements then? From here. Uh, this is more of a twisting lock. I'm basically trying to increase the twist in your leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you keep it bent. And rotate. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So basically, I just try to put your get your toes to go low and your heel to go high. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, is this looks like it's a flimsy grip. Try to pull your leg out. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is actually. It looks like it shouldn't be something I can hold, but I can hold this actually really well. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. You need to see that again? I'm sure he would love that you 